Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our devotions on the Book of Acts. And in this morning's passage, we see the church at prayer. The immediate response of the threats that have been made against Peter and John is that the church gathers to pray. It would seem that they probably prayed what we might call Korean style. We're told that they all raised their voices at the same time, crying out to God. And there are some very interesting movements within this prayer, which I think give a pattern, give a model for us in our prayers. You can find it, by the way, in Acts chapter 4, from verse 23 to verse 31. I won't read it all now, but do look at this passage for yourself. And the first thing I've called perspective, because before they ask for anything, this group of believers praise God. Very specifically, they pray and praise God for the fact that it's God and not the Sanhedrin who is in charge. A few Jewish leaders, even powerful and influential ones, are not going to deter them from preaching the good news of the kingdom. They praise the God of creation, the one who made all things. It's a cosmic vision, and it's one that puts everything else in perspective. That's helpful for us at this time of difficulty and challenge. Remember who is in control. One of the commentators on Acts writes this, true prayer always begins with who God is before focusing on our present needs. The second movement within this prayer I have called spirit uh, because it's the recognition that God speaks through his spirit. Do you remember in Peter's first sermon, he quotes from Psalm 16, that great resurrection psalm. Here, it's Psalm 2, a royal psalm, which speaks about God's anointed one. In Hebrew, the word is Messiah. In Greek, the word is Christos. It's a psalm which clearly speaks of Jesus. And what happens is that the believers take that psalm and apply it to their present situation, to the opposition that they are facing from the Jewish and the Gentile leaders. And using that psalm as a template, they recognise that whilst this is all part of God's plan, nevertheless, they are responsible for their actions. Above all, the psalm demonstrates how useless it is to plot against God's Messiah. It talks about the one enthroned in heaven laughing at their feeble plotting and planning. You know, in our prayers, it's not only good to focus on who God is as the mighty God of creation, but it's good to take his word, to take scripture and apply scripture to our present situation and let it guide us in our prayers. The third movement within this prayer I've called story. They spell out God's great story of creation and relate it to their own story, their own present situation. And what they pray is most instructive. We might expect them to pray for safety. We might expect them to say, Lord, will you remove this obstacle? Will you take the threat away? But no, what they pray for is boldness in proclaiming the message and they pray for signs and wonders to follow. You know, as we pray, it's good to pray for boldness, not brashness, but boldness in our preaching of the gospel. Pray too for God to move in miraculous power to authenticate the things that we're praying for. And then after this prayer, there's both an, an internal and an external confirmation. Internally, there's a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. 
and recognition that their prayers have been answered as they speak out boldly. And the external sign is that the very building in which they are praying begins to shake. It's a little bit like the power of a day of Pentecost once again. And so my prayer today is that God would fill you afresh with his spirit and give you that boldness as you proclaim the words, the works and the wonders of his kingdom. Amen.